Well, hello everybody, and welcome again to my little live on the on the, unannounced feeds. I know I'm trying not to announce too many at the moment because I don't know when or if I can definitely go live on that day. So I want to make sure that when I'm live, that I don't let anybody down. So I don't like letting people down. As you can see, I'm working on a robin at the moment. Not that you guess that, I know. So I've been working on all the different kind of layers within the robin's feathers. There's quite a lot though, actually, isn't there? There's, um, I think all in all so far on the feathers, I've probably put about, as a guess, maybe about five layers of paint on there, layers of detail. Kind of softening those details in between. So if you've got any questions, you're welcome to ask. So what I'm going to show you today, just out of interest, is just kind of the final touches on the feathers which I'm going to add to some of these just by overlaying some of the white paint just with a little bit of colour in places. Now I do this in one fell swoop for obvious reasons that the paint will start to move. I don't want that to happen. Just a few little extra touches over the top. But you can see how kind of delicate you got to be with this. You can't really take too long with it either. Okay, right, so a little bit more down there. And it is just very marginal because the thing is, if you go too heavy on this, it will disappear that white paint, it really will. And we don't want that to disappear on me just yet. Well, I don't want it to disappear at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> right, okay. So I'm going to add a little bit more. I'll tell you what I might do, you know. When you look at my palette of colours here, you can see I've got a variety of colours already mixed up, which I've been using for the oranges, which, believe it or not, just for the background of the head, is actually lemon yellow. That's the, the basic uh, kind of base layer colour, just a foundation wash, which I've used just before I put the colour on the face. Other than that, what I want to do is go for some dark. Now, this is a bit of burnt sombre and lamp black. I'm going to roll it. I'm going to load it. I'm going to roll it. And what I'm going to do then is get a tissue... This is a very clean one. No, it's not, I know. And dab it. That just takes off some residual paint just off the brush. Just that little bit. And allows me just to add the finest details using the very tip of this very worn brush. So I've had this brush for quite a while now. At least, um, how many? Two paintings? <laughs> they don't last me that long, the brushes. They never do, because I do so much, so much detail work is that I soon wear the tips away. I mean, that's why these particular brushes are not too expensive to buy them. This is the, the Winsor & Newton uh, Cotsman Series 111. And it's a size double zero. I'm not paid by them, don't worry. I'm not a commission. And uh, I've been using them for many, many years. However, there are some really good brushes on the market which, um, have, been, which have been recommended to me recently as well. So, some really nice brushes. Now, this Robin, by the way, just out of interest, have a quick look at make sure there's nobody commenting. Is actually a photograph by a very, very clever photographer who I've contacted or on Instagram. A chap called Pen, called Ben, not Pen, Ben. Hi Ben, I hope you're watching this. And uh, if you go onto his Instagram account, just do a search for um, Backguard Bird Studio. And uh, he's the one that's provided this excellent photograph. So it's a little bit of a shout out for Ben. So thank you, Ben, for this fantastic photo, which, as you can see, hopefully in point of good use for you. And Ben, as a thank you, as I said, you will get a copy of this as well. When I photograph this painting, after it's all completed, you get a copy of the photograph to do what with, or with what you ever want to do with it, if you know what I mean. So if you want to print it, do whatever you want to do with it. That's my little way of saying thank you for such a lovely photo, okay? So again, if you want to print it onto t-shirts, make coasters, <laughs> on a bedspread, I don't know, I don't know. But that's the idea anyway, okay. Right, so just add a little bit more color in there. Now, I'm not quite happy with the way this looks on the back of the head at the moment. So I might try and see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. So I just got a little bit closer. Okay, so you should be able to see that now. All right, so if there's any comments, if you want to comment on anything, please let me know, because I'd be interested to kind of hear from you. 
I don't know if I'll see the comments on the screen here because I've got the computer by the side of me at the moment. So fingers crossed, I'll be able to see the words that you type. So if I keep knocking the camera in my head, I do apologize. I can see it just on the side of the head here. I just need to lighten this in places a little bit too dull because it's not showing the shape or the form within the feathers. So all I'm simply doing is using the lifting off technique. Just lifting off technique. Now please let me know that you can hear me and you can see everything okay because uh, I never really know. Up until I play the video back after being on here for 25 minutes, half an hour, I never really know. So please let me know whilst I'm live online just to say, yes, Paul, it's working fine. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'm just lifting these off, as I say, just using, just lifting off method. I'm barely touching that paper using the very tip of this double zero brush and lifting the paint off. And you can see these lines which I'm creating here. And when you look at my tissue, this is a color I've just lifted off there a lot. So it's just lifting off some details. Because I've already put other colors underneath this, and some of the colors which I've put on are staining colors, which are quite handy because that means that when I lift off the detail off the top of the, the back of the head here, this color now shines through. It really does. So I mean that and that allows me to kind of add those finer highlights without using well, I've got lots of watercolor white on this because I need that for the robin, but without using more white paint. So a little bit more there. Okay, who's on there? Let's have a quick look at the uh, computer. Letter, hiya, uh, what paper do you use? Now this paper letter, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just zoom back out briefly for you, just so you can see what I'm looking at. Now, the paper, let me put the brush in my mouth then, do you realize that? That's your fault letter, thank you. If I just move this away a little bit, now the one I use is this one here, and it's a Bockingford block. The block basically means it's glued around all four sides other than little tiny gap at the top and you see that it's got a little arrow there which shows you there's a little hole where you can slide a palette knife all the way around to remove the paper from the block the block pad now the size as you can see on this one is a 310 millimeter by 230 millimeter or 12 inch by 9 inch and it's a knot paper okay so basically it's not hot pressed it's not gone through hot rollers so therefore it's got a little bit of texture to the paper so that's the one that I use and I've been using Bockingford paper um, for quite a few years now. I do like Bockingford paper. It's, uh, it's very nice. It's got like a medium texture. It's not smooth. It's not hot pressed, as I say. And it's not too rough. So that means I can really get the detail onto this painting if I can. I'll just go back to the um, close-up for you. Right. That should be better now. Okay. Right. So that's that one. Right. So I'm going to carry on lifting off a little bit more. Now, where's my piece of paper? I always like to use a piece of paper underneath my hand because we've all got natural oils on our hands, haven't we? Uh, my partner calls it grease, but I don't, you know, she, that's what she tells me anyway. But <laughs> we've all got natural oils on our hands, and because of that, we don't want to put grease on the paper. Okay, sorry, oils. We don't want to put oils on the paper because if you do, that will act like a wax resist. It'll, it'll, the paint will resist sticking to the paper, so... Always protect the paper with something if you can. Just put something underneath. Some people use, um, you know that tracing paper which you can get, which is semi-transparent. You can do that over the entire sheet then. Just cut out the area, just a little bit wider though, for the uh, for the subject itself. So you could do it that way around. Just to protect the paper. Because the thing is as well, when I'm using the paints here, so if I just pull it a little bit more off. I've got my palette here, as you can see. So when I'm actually dragging the paint from the palette, sometimes you think, no, I don't want to spill it onto the paper. So sometimes I will cover up all the way around, but not normally when I'm doing a video tutorial for Patreon or something like that. So if I'm doing a tutorial for Patreon, I've got to make sure that I leave it clear just so it doesn't obscure some of the painting because it's not fun people trying to watch a, a lesson on how to paint, say, a barn owl or, or um, a dog or a cat. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. So I just want to lift off a few more of these. Just kind of create a bit more of a texture, a bit more of a detail within the back of the head. Okay, a little bit more there. All right. Now, I know that a uh, place like America, the robins over there are a little bit different to here in the UK. I know they're a little bit bigger. 
I don't know how red they are, so I can't quite remember. I have seen, not seen them up close because I've never been to America. Not that I don't want to, I'd love to go there. Um, but that's another topic altogether. Is that they are a little bit different. I know they're bigger than our robins from what I understand. But they're also a little bit, I think the colours are slightly different as well. On yours, I don't know if you get the red breast on your robins there. Because I think your robins are more like our, I don't know, a bit like the blackbirds that we have over here. Thinking about it, so let me know. That's all right, no problem, letter. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, who is this one we got on there? I'm just trying to stare at the monitor, so bear with me a minute. Uh, hello, Nidia. Hello, Nidia. Hello, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem at all. I'm glad you like it. I started this one this morning. All right. So I don't know where you're watching this from, but at the moment it's now 22 minutes past three in the afternoon here in the UK. And the time does tick on quite quickly when you're painting. So I'm just continuing to lift off a few more details because it's gone a little bit muddy in places on the top of the head. And to avoid that, you can just take a little bit of the paint off just to add these extra bits and bobs in there, you know, the extra textures. But I'm also looking at the direction that some of these lines go in. So I want to make sure that the lines go in a particular way that you can see where the shapes and the forms go. Because adding these lines in that direction will help create the shape within the uh, within the robin. Now I've said I've been pulling this paint off. Now when you look at my tissue now, you can see there's quite a lot of paint on there, isn't there? So that's what it does. It just kind of helps you create the form and the shape which is needed for this kind of delightful little robin. Now normally I paint, I've painted a lot of robins over the years, as you can probably imagine. Uh, but this particular one, I thought I'd just do a head and shoulders. Um, so thank you again to Ben for the use of the photo. Uh, I've got a few more down there. Think, I'll tell you what I will do, I'll just pull a few more off at the top. Then what I'm going to do is continue with the, the white paint and just uh, add some more white paint around the chest. Because the thing is, the way I tend to work as well, is that even though we're going to add white into this. You need something for the white to stand out. Now you could reserve the white to the paper, which is the obviously the traditional way of using the um, the watercolors. I don't do it that way around because I'm different. I've been told that a few times, <laughs> so I'm a little bit different. Um, so I tend to use black and I tend to use white. Okay, so that's just my way of painting. We've all got our own methods and styles. So actually, that's a good question for you. Do you use white paint? Do you use black paint? Let me know. Just put a comment down below and I'd be interested to hear from you actually to see uh, if you do. And if you do use white paint, which one? Do you use watercolour white? Do you use um, gouache or gouache? Some people pronounce it. Do you use acrylic white paint instead, which is a bit more permanent obviously on the paper? So yeah, post a comment down below. Let me have a look, see what you've got. I'd be quite interested to find that out because uh, I know there's a there's a variety of different techniques and ways people do things out there, but this is just my particular way. Right, what I'm going to do, so make sure they can see this on the screen. Okay, wish you can. I'm not zoomed in that much at the moment because uh, it goes a little bit blurry when I zoom in on this uh, on this webcam. So if I go to down to the bottom here, I'm going to add some white paint. Now the white paints I use, I'll show, show you all about mixing this. Um, on Patreon, so I've got a, a different tutorials on Patreon on mixing watercolor white. So I'm gonna uh, set a little bit more in there. Now I use a ceramic palette because uh, I just prefer the way that the paint lies flat within the within the palette itself. Okay, right now when I'm adding white, I want to make sure that I want this in like a creamy consistency because I want this to really stand out that little bit more. The thing with watercolour white as well is that it, when it dries, it dries duller. Okay, So it will dry very often duller and it all depends how much water you tend to add to the white paint. And it also depends, also depends on the type of white paint that you've got as well, the manufacturer. Some white paints are opaque, some white, which is what mine is, mine is an opaque white. Some white paints are semi-transparent, some white paints are semi-opaque, and so on and so on and so on. So if you do buy white paint, my personal recommendation, just a little tip for you, while we're live on air, is just to have a look for one that's opaque, okay? 
So I've tested a variety of white paints out. Again, on some of my Patreon channel, I put a video on there. Quite a long one, actually. People have to skip through it, I think, otherwise they fall asleep. But it's a video on <laughs> different white paints which I've tested. I bought some in and tried a variety of them out, from Sennelia to um, Winsor Newton types and all sorts of varieties. And it's worth, if you are on Patreon and you're on my channel and you haven't seen that video yet, it's probably worth your while just having a look at that. And uh, it'll help you decide on the white paint which I'd recommend, you know, or which you prefer to have a go with. Because it can be expensive when you're testing all different whites out or different paints out. You know, how many people have said to you when you're painting, say, well, have you tried Snellia products? Have you tried um, some of the other ones that's under there's loads on the market, isn't there? Without going through all the names. But it gets quite expensive if you do that as well. So you don't want to be doing that too much. That's why I recommend if you go to an art group, if you are in one, or you've got friends who are also paint in watercolour and they use different types of paint, then do a bit of a swap for a day, just for a day, and see how we get on with their colours. You might be pleasantly surprised or you might think, actually I prefer my own. So bear that in mind, okay? Right, so I'm going to keep going just a little bit more. So you can see how, how white this is now, how intense white it is. So I'm gradually building up the feathers that come around from the chest of this um, robin all the way around the bottom here. So I've got a lot of white to add on this. Now I'll tend to very often uh, kind of tone it down a little bit as well sometimes with a little bit of colour. Um, just so it's not pure white as well. Right, I'll have a quick look at comments. I've got another comment on there. Very quick look. Better. Hello there. I use both colours. White gouache. Gouache or gouache or whatever you way you put, want to pronounce it. Is uh, I've got one of those. I've got gouache in, in my um, box of tricks as well, which I've not used it much because I always stuck with a watercolor white. But um, they are very much the same. And gouache tends to be, in my eyes anyway, my personal um, kind of experience, a bit more opaque as well. That's why you very often see a lot of um, watercolors who do use white use white gouache or gouache. How do you say it? But um, I say I've always used watercolor white. I used to, no, I've not always used watercolor white. I tell the fib there. And what I tend to do in the past, I've also used um, acrylic white, which I have for, I did that for years actually, using acrylic white. The benefit for acrylic white is that you can overlay it with color easily. If you try doing that to this white here, you find sometimes the white will just blur and smudge and wash away or go quite muddy. Whereas if you use acrylic white, you find that with the acrylic white, it will stay put because it is a permanent medium. So bear that in mind. Okay, so that's with the acrylic white. I, but as I say, the tip is because it's permanent, that means it is. It's going to stay. So trying to get it off is a bit of a nightmare. If you make a bit of a mistake, or as Bob Ross used to call it, a happy accident, then obviously removing that paint can be quite a tricky ordeal, really and uh, trying to get it off. But uh, So I want to use acrylic whites if you want to make make um, a colour really stand out. So if I wanted to think about around this area, which I need to lighten in places around to get a bit more shape in the face yet, then in the past I would have probably put a little acrylic whites on there, then overlaid it with the yellowy orangey colour. And that would then stand out really, really well. You know, I remember a few years ago, I used to do a lot of sea fishing, just off the shore though, not on the boats. I did go on a boat twice, but let's just say I wasn't very well. Mm, that's a different topic altogether again. And anyway, so on the boats, um, so when I was fishing, should I say, I used to make my own fishing floats. So I used to manage two fishing tackle shops, a place called Brixham in, in, um, in South Devon. And um, when I used to work in those shops and manage those shops, I used to make my own fishing floats out of polystyrene. Now, where this is getting to is that I used to spray them white first, i.e. like this. And because it was a permanent fixture, a permanent paint, I could then overlay it with a bright yellow, which would stand out really well on the water. So that's what I mean by acrylic paint, is that you could paint it with acrylic paint, use some very fine lines, then add just a little bit of colour over the top. And you find that will make a, quite a lot of difference to the painting itself. All right, so what we got there. So, okay. Still can see that okay. 
Um, we've been on for a little while now. I'm trying to set up the Google Time thing on my screen. Oh, 20 minutes. There you go. I can see it now. I tend to aim for about 25 minutes to half an hour. And then I will go. And carry on. It's on my lonesome. I know. Right, okay. Now, looking at these feathers, there are brighter marks around some of these feathers. I'm going to get finer now. Just keep it really fine. Now, if you fancy having a go at painting a robin like this, put the full robin, not just the head and shoulders and part wing. Um, if you have a look, I'm going to send this to my Patreon channel again, so beware, okay? If you... <laughs> If you have a look at my Patreon channel there, patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist, I've got a complete free video on how to paint a robin. I think it's a four-parter, I think. And it's step-by-step, -step, complete video format on how to paint a robin. I've even thrown in the reference photo and my outline drawings. If you want, if you don't want to try and work out the drawing stage of it, you can trace my outline as well. And it's all free. Okay? Just have a look on my Patreon channel there. All completely free, you'd have to sign up or anything for it. No emails, no nothing. Nada, federal, zilch. Okay, there you go. There's a bit of selling for you. Well, how can I sell something that's not for sale? That doesn't work out, does it? So add a little bit of highlights towards this feather here. That's very true. I can't sell something if it's not for sale, can I? If it's free. Ah, <sighs> dope. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a few lighter really bright lines I'm gonna have this white so I can just about paint with it so it's quite thick somebody said that about me once and then all the way down <laughs> all the way down to the bottom there okay and I think I need to add a few more on the top actually as well so I want a few more around there so again load the brush up Make sure it's not too kind of um, loaded on the tip of the brush. So I want to keep these lines nice and fine as well if I can. Okay, they're overlapping in places. And a few more now towards the chest itself. Right, okay. And just around there. Now, for information, if anybody's interested, by the way, I will be live again on Facebook, uh, which will be tomorrow evening, UK time at 6.30ish. Could be around about half past six-ish when I'll be on live. I'll say ish because it depends on when I cook the tea, okay? Sorry, evening meal. Or some people here call it dinner. I know. <laughs> See, that's another thing as well. Is it dinner? Is it, oh, I don't know. When I was at school, we used to have dinner ladies, not uh, evening meal ladies. That's my argument, anyway. <laughs> so, if you fancy going on Facebook, have a look for the Devon Artist. If you're not, if you're not found my channel down there, so on Facebook, type in the Devon Artist, and you'll find my channel. And um, as I say, tomorrow evening, half past six, I should hopefully, fingers crossed, as long as I'm all working on the internet here, go live again with something a little bit different. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't know. No, I do, but I'm not going to say. It's a little bit different. So a bit more detail around that feather there. I'm trying to think about the, sh the overall shapes here as well. Because there are some darker marks. Get my brush a quick wash out. There are some darker marks within the back feathers at the same time. So I've got to think about that. But I also want to just tone it down a bit. It's a little bit too, a little bit too white in places. So I'm going to get a little bit of raw sienna. I'm going to add this raw sienna in, but I want this to more of a kind of milky, come creamy consistency, really. Something like that. You just see it running down the side, so it's kind of in between the two. Nearly milky, nearly creamy. Now, the beauty about this is that I can now add a little bit of colour, just in places, over the top. Not too much, because I don't want to ruin, I don't want to, say, ruin the white, because I'll start moving it around. I don't want to be doing that. just want to add a bit of colour in there. Just to brighten that up just a tiny little bit. And then, what else have we got? Just down the side there. You can see you can see that going on top of the white there. So that kind of reflects what I said about the fishing floats and what I meant by that. 
as a sort of kind of a very loose analogy. A little bit around the back. I don't want it looking like a very old bird, because it will otherwise. So you've got to be careful with white, because white can be quite stark on its own. Okay, now while that's drying off, what I'm going to do is work a little bit, bear with me a minute, I'm just catching all the leads here, is work a little bit around here, okay, around the, the face itself. Yeah, sorry about that, I've got leads hanging everywhere here at the moment. So if I work around the face, I'm going to do some lifting off again around that area. Let's have a quick look there, a quick slurp of coffee. I would like to make a cup of coffee before start because um, then you can relax into the painting. You've got a bit of coffee with you at the same time. Right, just add a little bit of colour in there. That's a bit too white in places. But because it's dry, I can add colour over the top. Okay, so the same process as we did before. I'm going to do some lifting off now. Now the lighter the colour, the harder it is to see the marks. But I want to make sure that this is a little bit lighter in places. We could just lighten the whole lot and then put the detail over the top again. But now I like to kind of create the detail through lightening by just removing some of the paint in places. Now fortunately this paint I'm using, which is cadmium orange and lemon yellow mix with a touch of Scarlet Lake, is what's in there, um, are all transparent colors and they do come off. They tend not to stain the paper which means I can show the yellow underneath, a little bit more yellow underneath. Depends how much paper, paint I want to take off there as well. Now you can see that already starting to work. I want to get that shape, as I say, within the face. And I can't do that unless I remove some of the paint just to create a few highlights on there. Okay, I'm going to be on here for probably another three minutes, something like that. Then I'm going to have to go because I want to crack on with this painting and then start on another one ready for Facebook tomorrow evening. Um, so if you've got any questions you want to ask, please fire away. It's not a problem at all. So let me know. And if you're watching this on catch-up, fine. Still put the questions below. Because I will get to see those. I will get notified by, by uh, YouTube. Or Facebook, because I'm going to share this video onto Facebook at the same time. Okay. So if you're watching this on Facebook, still put a comment down there. All right. So I will look at that later on and you will get a reply from me at some point. Okay, so I do tend to reply to just about every message that I see. Sometimes I might miss one or two because I've not been notified by uh, YouTube or Facebook. Depends on where, they, where I'm supplying this. Okay, so you can see I'm lifting off as I go along just tiny little marches in the very tip of the brush. But you've got to keep washing the brush out because if you don't, you end up moving paint around all the time. So just do, I don't know, two or three, something like that. There's one. There's another one, just very lightly. Lift that paint off now, it's too much. So we're gonna get some color. Just come back in, just touch it back up a little bit in places. Add a bit of color in there, and that's fine. So now this is starting to get a little bit more of a curve from there over, and that's what I'm trying to achieve, okay? Yeah, oh, okay, letter, thank you. Oh, I didn't realize you was in Texas, hello. <laughs> I don't know what time it will be over there. I don't know. How many hours are you behind here in the UK? So bearing in mind here, as you can see, it's 3.40 in the afternoon. Okay, so it's getting on a little bit now. I've already got coffee time. So 3.40 in the afternoon. So what time is it where you are? What time What time will it be? About half past 10, pre, um, 10.30, 10.40, something like that, maybe? I don't know, really. So let me know. Right, okay, a little bit more around there. So again, using the lifting off technique, using the very tip of the brush, you can just about make out, hopefully on the camera, these tiny little marks, which are on here as well. Now my video on YouTube is about 15 seconds behind real time. I've noticed that, because I'm watching it whilst I'm painting as well. And my action's about 15 seconds on YouTube ahead if you know what I mean, so in the future, so to speak. You know what I mean, anyway. So if there's a delay, you know why. Right, okay. Oh, 11.40 in Atlanta. Oh, hello, 11.40. Okay, so basically, uh, you're about four hours then, aren't you? So four hours, 
uh, behind the UK in the time. No, you're not. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, about that, isn't it? Four, yeah, four, five hours, actually, in that five hours. I couldn't add up then. I do apologise. I've got painting in my head at the moment. So now you can see these, these little marks being pulled off here. Just little tiny strokes. That's all they are. Just so I can create those little highlights on there, okay? Right. And that's it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it at this for now. And I'm going to carry on with this off camera. And if you want to catch me, as I say, pop onto Facebook um, tomorrow. And UK time would be on uh, roughly about 6.30 6 in the evening. I'll be on there painting something a little bit different to this, okay? Now, my question of the day for you is, what paints do you use? What's your preferred paint? you know, manufacturer. The ones I use are these here, which, which are my half pans for Windsor & Newton. I do have tubed paints as well. So Windsor & Newton, half pans, both the students and the professional quality are the ones I tend to use most of. So what paints do you use and why? Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye in a minute. Oh, hello. <laughs> Who's this? Um, Eve. Hello, Eve. Hello. Uh, Florida here. Beautiful birdie. Thank you very much indeed, um, Eve. That's very kind of you. Um, but you just caught me as I'm just about to go, but this will be left on here on, on YouTube once it's kind of rendered it and sorted itself out. It'll be on here to be watched by anybody from there on. So anybody watching this, as I say, on Catch Up, please post a comment below. I would be love, kind of nice to hear from you. And um, don't forget as well to click on subscribe, like and share. And if you get a chance, remember I've got a Robin painting video tutorial on my Patreon page. A little bit of a sale, so be aware, okay? Which is here, patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. If you fancy having a got painting a Robin, a whole Robin, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, step by step with my complete all kind of video tuition, and I talk in real time like I'm doing now. It's not all voiceover or anything like that. And uh, have a look at that. It's all free, no sign up, no nothing. And you get the photo and the outline join as well. So, I'm going to have to say goodbye. Snellia, Daniel Smith, thank you, you two. <laughs> Nanette, hello there. So I'm going to have to say goodbye now. Everybody's popping on and saying hello now, aren't you? Oh. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye. And as I say, please post comments below. And until next time around, possibly the same kind of time next week, fingers crossed, I'll see you all again then. All right, so bye-bye for now. Right, that's another video tutorial done for you. Now this time around, we're going to be working on a tabby cat. I'll just show you the painting. I've been asked quite a few times now, about how to paint wood. And there's different types of wood, obviously you've got the bark on the tree, you've got this kind of wood here, such as floorboards, and the wooden structure on the top and the left hand side as well. But we're gonna be doing this, we'll approach this by doing wet and wet techniques, scumbling, stippling, washing over the top, lifting off details as well, and adding the finer details on to get all this texture within the wood itself. Now, once we've done that, we're gonna be working on the eyes of the cat. Now the eyes, we've gotta have so much life in there. So I'm going to go right through from the start, right to the very end of how to paint a very detailed cat's eye. Now once we've done that, then we've got to start working on the fur. So let's make a start on this little tabby cat and let's get them brushes wet. So come and join me on Patreon and let's paint this cute tabby cat together.